What up, everybody? Back again here with Order of Operations Lesson 1. Thank you for spending your time with Instructive Beats today. So let's dive right in. So our objective today, today I will be able to solve math problems without parentheses by using my order of operations. Okay, that's what we're trying to get done today. So our math vocabulary, first word that we're gonna talk about a lot in our next uh, four lessons is operation. So operations are in math are anything that you're doing to a number, whether it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. Our order of operations is the order that you solve math problems in, right? That's what we're trying to figure out today. What is the order that we solve math problems in and why do we do it? Which leads us to a convention. Now, a convention we're talking about is math, right? So a math convention, and that is a fact that is agreed upon by mathematicians. Let's talk a little bit about why these words are important. To do that, I want you to imagine this, right? You are this messenger going from one king to the next. Both kings were presented with this same problem, four plus six times two. Your king solved it and they did four plus six first and got 10 and then multiplied by two and he ended up with 20, right? The other king that you are taking this message to did the multiplication part first and got four plus 12 and got 16. So as you're taking this message, you know there's going to be a disagreement, right? And when kings disagree, things like this tend to happen. The answer is 20. No, the answer is 16. No, it's 20. I'm the king and I'm right. No, it's 16. I'm right. I'm a king. Now, people got tired of all the fighting over simple math questions like this. So what they did is they put their head together, okay, and they had all the greatest mathematicians um, about 500 years ago come together and they came up with a convention, which is, as we said before, an agreement on a set of rules for math, right? And so they're like, you know what? We're tired of this fighting. Let's just pick a way that you're supposed to solve these questions, right? We'll stop all the fighting. We'll stop all the miscommunication. We're just going to make a math convention right here, right now. And when they did that, they came up with the order of operations, okay? And they wrote it on this scroll. That's why I got the scroll paper back here, right? And they came up with the order that you're gonna solve questions in. And again, this isn't anything crazy mathematically. It's literally just a set of rules that they were like, hey, we're just gonna solve problems this way and that way we won't have to have any more jousting and sword fighting and everybody can be happy, right? So these are our lyrics from our Order of Operation song, which I highly recommend, awesome song, okay? Parentheses to start, exponents is the next part, right? Then you have multiplication left to right is smart. Add and sub or add subtract is next, right? Left to right is best. So these are our lyrics, but I highlighted in red the important parts. So first you're gonna do any parentheses, okay? Then you're gonna do any exponents. Now in fifth grade, you don't need to do exponents, but we are gonna, our lesson four is gonna focus on what those are and how we use them. Then we're gonna have multiplication and division. Now these are equal to each other. These are a fact family. That's why we do not like PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally if you've heard that before, because that makes it seem like multiplication comes first. And that's not true. Multiplication and division are part of the same fact family. They're inverse operations. So when you solve them, you don't do one before the other, you just go from left to right, just like how you read, right? So whatever comes first, left to right. And then after that, addition and subtraction is on the same line. Again, those are fact families. They are equal to each other, which means you go from left to right. You don't do addition first or subtraction first. They're equal, you do them at the same time, doing whatever comes first, left to right. So you can check out our awesome song right here. Parentheses to start, exponents the next part. Multiplication and division, left to right is smart. Add, subtract is next, left to right is best. Now you've done the equation and your teacher's impressed. That is fantastic, thank you so much. Make sure you check out that song, like it, and subscribe to Instructor Beats if you're not. 
we don't want you to have to write down the lyrics to our song every time, right? That should help you remember. But typically, you're going to write it down like this, parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division next to each other with a line going from left to right, and then addition and subtraction going from left to right. So those are next to each other. That's why we don't do please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAW. Oh, sorry, that should be an S. Aunt Sally, because this makes it seem like the multiplication and division aren't equal to each other, not in the same line, when it, which in fact they are. Now we also know you don't want to write out all these words. So here is how we write it down and we'll practice this, but here's how we do it. We just write a P, then we have an exponent, we have multiplication and division next to each other and we put the arrow next to it. Okay, again, these are fact families. That's why they're equal, they're on the same line. And then after we finish our multiplication and division, we are do our addition and subtraction. Again, the arrow is important because it reminds us that addition doesn't come before subtraction. They're equal to each other. You just go from left to right. Okay, so that's why we write it like this, opposed to how some other teachers teach you guys how to write it. Let's take this, these steps and apply them to a problem. So here we have evaluate the expression, right? Evaluate just means to solve. An expression is basically a math equation, but without the equal sign. So what I like to do every time I have an order of operation question, I write down my steps over here. That way I can cross them out. Now today we're not worried about parentheses. Um, that's going to be next lesson. So I don't have any parentheses. Let me cross it out. I don't have any exponents. Exponents would be like a little number above that number right there. And again, that's going to be lesson four, but you don't need to know that in fifth grade. That's going to be sixth grade. So we cross out our exponents. Now I have subtraction, addition, multiplication, and addition. I have four operations to do. I see that my multiplication and division come first, so I need to solve any of those first. So my first step here is to solve one times six, which is six. Now what I do is I rewrite the problem underneath, okay, rewriting the other operations and numbers the same. I like to show what I solve by doing this kind of arrow diamond thing. I don't know what it's called. It just helps me know, that, okay, I solved this operation and now I've simplified it down. I rewrite the next steps. Okay, if you notice, I'm going to write the next steps underneath each other. That way, first of all, I'm getting ready for algebra, which is when you have to do that. But I'm also showing my steps, so that way I don't make a silly mistake. Now I'm done with any multiplication divisions. I can cross those two steps out. And now I have subtraction, addition, and addition. I know that all of those are equal because they're next to each other in my steps. So I just need to solve them from left to right. So I'm going to do 4 minus 3, which is 1 plus 6 plus 2, then I still go from left to right, that's 7 plus 2, and so my answer for this expression when I evaluated it is 9. If you don't follow those steps, if you do the subtraction before the multiplication, you're going to get a different answer. That's why, again, they came up with this math convention called order of operations to help everybody know how they should solve it. When everybody follows the same rules, it makes life a little bit easier. All right, so now we have a we do, okay? Copy this one down your notes as we do it. Write your steps over here, just like we, uh, I did for my I do, okay? You should write those down. Don't forget the arrows, very important. And we don't have any parentheses or exponents again. Again, we're gonna add those in as our lessons go on. We do have addition and division, okay? And we're trying to solve for t. t is called a variable. It's just a, a number that we don't know, okay? So they just put a letter there for it. So some people would do three plus six first because they think that comes first going from left to right. But if you're following our math convention called the order of operations, then you know we need to do our multiplication and division before we do our addition and subtraction. So what you need to do is solve this operation first. So six divided by three is two. And then I'm going to rewrite my uh, other numbers and operations. So rewrite three plus. Now I have three plus two, which is five. So I think T equals five, right? Pretty simple, writing your steps down, making sure you cross them out as you do them. And that way you know what step you're on. That's why I love to write the steps over here. It just helps me stay organized. And I know the hardest part about any math is being neat. All right, go ahead and try this one. Again, you're trying to evaluate, which means to solve the expression. I did not write your steps over there so you could practice it. Pause the video, try and solve this one. And then when you're ready to check it, push play. If you're still a little bit confused, then you can just do it with me again as another we do problem. Hopefully you just paused it and tried it out. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna write my steps. Okay, parentheses, exponents next, 
multiplication and division left to right, add and subtract left to right. Okay, I don't have any parentheses or exponents. I do have division, multiplication, subtraction, and multiplication. So I have four operations, all right? And I know that I need to do my multiplication and division first. So I have division, multiplication, multiplication, and I'm, I know these are equal to each other, which is why they're on the same step. So I need to go from left to right. So the first one I need to solve is 50 divided by 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10. Then I'm going to rewrite all my other operations and numbers. Again, I'm showing what I just simplified using this symbol right here, which I don't know what it is, just helps me stay organized. I haven't finished all my multiplication and division yet, so I can't cross out that step. I have two multiplications. I need to go from left to right. So 10 times 5 is 50. Then I need to subtract 3 times, or minus 3 times 2. I'm still not done with my multiplication. I need to do my multiplication first if I'm following my steps. So I have 50 minus 6. Now I'm left with just subtraction. And so I, when I simplify that step, I get my answer as 44. So when I evaluated the expression, I came up with it being 44 because I followed my steps and my order of operations. Thank you so much for checking us out today. Okay, please stick around for lesson two. We're going to dive into using parentheses. Hopefully this was a good introduction. You understand why we need an order of operations, it, what the steps are, and how you can use them. All right, check out our order of operations song. Again, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe the video. Instruct the beats. Out.